guys welcome back to my channel so I know I've glammed up but because I'm so excited for this video I'm going to do it's a year or nay video so you know uh -huh. so full disclosure I was not going to do the show for my year or nay playlist but after consideration and after like talking about to people on the internet I decided to actually like do my input on this show because this show is really really good so the show I'm going to talk about is called She's Got To Have It. It premiered last week Thursday on Netflix so if you haven't seen it please watch it. And another reason is Christmas is coming up so you need shows to you know put down and actually watch during the holidays. So this is the show for it. So my name is Ifa Labi. please subscribe to my channel and then let's get into this show. So first of all before I even get into like the virtues of the show and what I like and what I don't like about the show I think it's time we address something head on. You see, when this show came up, a lot of questions I saw on the internet was that is this the next show to beat Insecure? Is this the new Insecure? And I felt very offended as, an, as a black person, right? I felt very offended because I'm like, first of all, there are four Chris's in the superhero genre. You don't see us saying that, oh, is Chris Evans the new Chris? Or is Chris Pratt going to take over the other Chris? Or is Chris Hemsworth going to be the new Chris or is Chris Pine going to be the new Chris we never do this for any of the other people so why is that when it comes to shows that's about people with my skin color it's all of a sudden oh is that show better than that show why can't we all enjoy it in peace I watch Insecure, I watch Being Mary Jane, I watch Queen Sugar, I watch Dear White People these are all very distinct shows there might be some similarities but then they are not that similar and when people were comparing this to Insecure, at first I was a bit apprehensive because I'm like, wait, is this Insecure just repackaged? And I was like, you know what, they do this all the time, so let me actually get into the show. So when I watched the show, I was very angry at the people that were like, is this the new Insecure? Because even though it's, it has the lead being a strong woman, but Insecure and she's got to have it, they're like, on two different spectrums, it's like, this is this point A and that's point B. You know? two different things so that's my thing to everybody out there who critiques shows don't put all black shows into one basket we all know it's not like that they understand right don't make it seem like oh is this the new insecure is that a new blackish no that's that show do it on its own merit we don't do it to the rest of the people so why are you doing it to us so i've gotten this little rant out of the way let's just get into the show so another disclosure i haven't seen the original movie that this show is based on so if you don't know she's got to have it it's based on spike lee's 1986 movie i think that was his first movie he ever made so that movie is what the show like it's based on so you know there's not like a reboot or requel or you know all those things that they've been doing a lot this season I don't understand them but this is like a movie that decided to like expand on it and then bring it to this day and age and the movie came out in 1986 I mean that was like some long time before I was born so even though I haven't seen it now and I was looking for it before the show came out but then I couldn't find it but now here it's on Netflix so I'm actually going to watch that and I'm actually glad that I haven't seen the movie otherwise I'll, I'll be doing a lot of comparison with the movie and how the show differs and everything so because I haven't seen a movie, I'm actually a little bit glad about it. So, let's just get into the synopsis of the show. So, since the show is based on the 1986 movie, I'm going to read the synopsis for the 1986 movie. Beautiful Nola, darling. She can't decide what kind of man she wants to date, so she decides to date three at the same time. The first is Greer Child, a rich, handsome narcissist. He really is. Then there's Jamie Overstreet, a stable, overprotective alpha male. Finally, there's Mars Blackmon. A timid geek with a heart of gold. Unfortunately, while each suitor has his virtues, Darling just can't seem to make up her mind. You know, first of all, and I think the movie was really based on her interactions with like the three suitors. But I like the way the show has expanded it to be more than the more than the men in her life and how she can't seem to choose between them. It's more about her choices, what she decides to do with her sex life, what she decides to do with her art because she's an artist and what she decides to do with her friends and her interactions with the outside world. And I'm really, really glad about it because most often than not, this would have been just pigeonholed into how she can't seem to decide between the three men and we'll see how. And I'm really grateful for that. The fact that we see that each three men like they do something in her life but they are not the sole focus of her life hallelujah i'm so grateful for that so and that's like the huge thing and another thing is that she describes herself as a polyamorous pansexual 
I understand the polyamorous part, but I've been reading up on pansexual and for the life of me, I can't seem to figure out what pansexual means. So if you know what pansexual means, kindly comment below and let me understand this phrase because I don't know what it means. But Nola Darling is everything. Like she is everything. And I like the fact, I like how she's represented because you know mostly like this, she's not pigeonholed into being one kind of person. She's someone who wants to have fun. She's someone who is serious about her art. She's someone who is serious about how she's represented, how people see her, how, you know, all those interactions with it. And I also like the bond and the sisterhood and how like body image is presented. Cause there's this friend of hers who wants to alter her, like who wants to get butt injections so that she can like, you know, move up on the social ladder in her, in her workplace. And I like the fact that it wasn't just presented as, oh, plastic surgery is bad, or try to alter your body is bad, but it was presented as, you know what, since we fought so hard to get in control over your body, what you do to your body is your own choice. You don't need someone else to come and tell you that, oh, why are you going to get butt injections, or why are you getting lip injections? I mean, it's your body, so what you decide to do with it is your choice. So I, I was really excited about that part. I, I, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I get that. I really, really get that. And also, I've seen that people are drawing parallels between this show and Sex and the City. I don't know if it's because it's based in Brooklyn. I have no idea why. But I don't get Sex and the City vibe from it at all. I don't know why. I don't know why there's so much comparison. But I really don't get Sex and the City vibe. Maybe, like, there's a little bit, but it's not over in your face. Because you know Sex and the City was done from the perspective of Carrie Bradshaw. But if this is like Sex and the City, this is like Samantha Jones. Just like Samantha Jones' perspective in Sex and the City, just that she, this girl, is fabulous. Nola Darling is really fabulous. And another thing I like about the show is the musical score. I have, I don't know, I've been raving about this on Twitter, like, ever since I started watching the show. The music score in it is amazing. Like, you know how Insecure, the music score for Insecure is very hype and makes you, like, you know, you bump your head to it. This this is crazy like the music score for she's got to have it is amazing like even before they say any words you know what the mood is like the music just says the mood so even before they say one word you kind of get that mm, that's what we are doing right now or okay that's what's going to go down so the music score for it is very good and then i found out that spike lee is the one that actually set up the music score and, I, and when i found out i was like well it's, i mean it's his it's a show it's his movie and it's spike lee so at the end of the day He's good, like he's really good. So this show, yeah or nay, I give it a wholehearted yay. Like, like there's no way I can give this show a nay. Does it have some pitfalls? Of course, it's a show. Like you can't have hundred percent on any show. It has its pitfalls. Sometimes it seems very trying so hard. Sometimes I feel like a storyline is trying so hard. But for the way it is, for the tone in which it's set, I like the fact that it's a different representation of what a black woman is. Because not everybody wants to be in a committed relationship. Not everybody will work in a, an established place. Some people are polyamorous pansexuals. And I think that's fine. I mean, it's not like, you don't have to like be like, oh, why can't you choose? Or why are you doing all this with different men? That's her choice. If you can't fuck with that choice, like, move. Understand it. Just move in life. We can't have you people coming to rain on our parade. Because it says our parade. So she's got to have it. I give it a 9 out of 10, a 4.5 out of 5. It's amazing. Like, I'd recommend it for everybody to watch it. Go on Netflix and just go and get She's Got to Have It because it's everything. Like, I'm not lying. It's really everything. So, my name is Ifa Labi. I'm done with this year or nay video. I actually forgot what I was doing. Can you imagine? That's how much I love the show. So, this is a year or nay video. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos that. I'm going to be there. I just got this hair, right? So, and I, I don't know. I really like it. So, anyways, check out my other videos that are going to be laid up over here. And I'll see you on my next video, which is another year or nay. Because Christmas is coming. People need stuff to watch. And I'm going to provide all those services. So, mwah, 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 mwah.